Welcome, I'm Shay. I am a yoga teacher and an Ayurvedic yoga specialist. And I am joining you from Savannah, Georgia today, offering some Ayurvedic rituals and practices to help you move through the transitions of the seasons here. So today um, I'm going to just give you kind of a quick and dirty little Ayurveda 101, some basic concepts around the five elements, the three doshas and their energetics and how those apply to the seasons of the year. And again, rituals that we can use to kind of balance the doshas that um, are dominant in nature and within ourselves during this period. So to start with, um, Ayurveda believes that uh, all life, all matter, um, is created with a combination of five elements. So those five elements are space, sometimes called ether, air, fire, water, and earth. And those elements then combine to create what are called the three doshas. Dosha is the Sanskrit word that literally translates as a covering or that which darkens. So these are elements for um, dis-ease within the mind and the body and the spirit. And so um, dosha can also be considered the equivalent of like a person's constitution. Uh, and we use this information to help us understand our inherent strengths and challenges as we move through life. Um, so when these elements combine, for instance, air and space combine to create vata dosha, fire and water combine to create pitta dosha, and earth and water combine to create kapha dosha. These elements and these doshas then have certain energetics or characteristics um, that give them their qualities and kind of their um, uh, effects on the mind and the body and the spirit. Today we're going to focus on kapha dosha, the combination of earth and water, because these practices that I'm offering will be moving, uh, will be for support as we're moving into kapha season, which is late winter and early spring. And so many of us may be transitioning into spring and um, offering these practices as a way to create more balance, uh, brightness, vitality in the body. Um, love having these practices, so I'm very grateful to have the opportunity to share them with you. So these uh, characteristics of kapha dosha are heavy, slow, dull, cold, oily, smooth, dense, static, soft, and liquid, also sticky and cloudy. And so there's a lot of qualities here uh, because kapha dosha, again, is earth and water. So the combination of these two elements, there's a lot of things that we can think about. These They're not literally earth and water, it's the energetics. So water can be very heavy, can be very cold, just like earth can be very heavy, very cold. Um, very kind of cloudy, sticky, uh, dull, uh, other words that are great for it, like stagnation, lethargic. So these energies of kind of late winter and early spring before we're really moving into this time period of a lot of growth, a lot of movement, we're still moving through that kind of slowness right before renewal and rebirth. So again, these are the qualities of kapha the earth and water elements combining. And from an Ayurvedic approach, what we want to do is balance opposites. Um, in nature, when these particular doshas are dominant, it will also mean that those particular doshas are dominant within ourselves because we're not separate from nature. We're a reflection of nature. And so we may have uh, some excess kapha during late winter and early spring. So we may feel a little stagnant, lethargic, heavy, dull. Uh, our digestion can also be very slow and dull and sluggish. And so as we move into these longer days and warmer months, what we want to do is balance with these opposite qualities, um, opposite qualities from kapha, so that we can create um, 
uh, semblance of balance uh, and health and vitality. If this kapha dosha stays in excess, remember that dosha means that which darkens. So the more that we have any sort of excess in a dosha, the more susceptible become, we become to disease, uh, acute as well as chronic illness, any sort of discomfort. And this is on not just a gross level or a physical level, but also a subtle and spiritual level. So we're looking at all aspects of ourselves and um, nature as well. So I'd like to move in and share some practices with you. And when I'm offering practices, what I'm looking at is daily routine. Uh, so simple things that we can add to our daily habits uh, that will help um, reduce any excess of a dosha. It will strengthen our digestion, our agni and Ayurveda. Um, our agni strength is very important because it's what allows us to digest not just the food that we're taking in, but also any of our experiences, any external stimuli, all the emotions that we're having to process as well. And so being able to properly digest those, assimilating what we can use for nourishment, and also the ability to kind of remove and let go of anything that is considered waste or uh, something that's not serving us is very important and that takes strong digestion. So these practices also can help strengthen or regulate digestion. Um, we will also be looking at reducing ama, uh, the Sanskrit word for toxins. And then uh, lastly, building ojas, so our vitality, our vital tank that holds kind of our reserve. Uh, we can think of that as like pouring from a full cup uh, or pour pouring from an empty cup. So low ojas is when our cup is empty. Um, and we're, or our tank is empty and we're just having a bit of trouble uh, pouring from that cup, serving others, um, meeting our purpose in the world, whatever that may be. And so we really look at building ojas and supporting ojas, our vitality here. So first, daily routines, some practices that are really beneficial during this kapha period uh, when Earth and water are kind of dominant in nature and dominant within ourselves. Things like neti pot, so nas nasal irrigation, uh, is a wonderful practice this time of year that helps reduce some of that sticky, slimy, cloudy um, messiness that can be in the sinus passages this time of year, especially if we're somewhere that we experience a lot of pollen as things are blooming. Uh, so neti pot is a wonderful supportive practice here that decreases the accumulation of kapha in the body. Kapha is kind of home space in the body is the chest, throat, and head. And so that stuffiness can often be uh, excess kapha. We also want to consider tongue scraping. This is just a beautiful practice any time of year, not just in kapha season, because what tongue scraping does is a cleansing process that uh, first cleanses the tongue and the mouth of any uh, leftover residue from our sleep the night before when the body is going through its natural kind of cleansing process. Um, and then also um, it's allowing uh, the tongue scraping allows us to not swallow that ama back into the body. It also acts to activates the peristaltic process. So our digestion begins to receive that message that we are ready to start taking in food and beverage for the day, that we're awake and that um, our agony needs to kind of jumpstart itself. Um, another beautiful practice this time of year is rising with the sun or slightly prior to the sun. And I know this can be difficult, but um, the kapha, their doshas are related to not only the seasons, but certain times of the day as well. So the kapha hours of the day are from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. And so when we are able to rise with the sun or slightly prior to the sun, what we're doing is kind of getting a jump start into that kapha hour, where if we linger in bed a little longer, we hit snooze three or four times, uh, or we're, we tend to sleep later, when that kapha energy is dominant, it becomes even harder to get up. So we want to rise right before the kapha hour or right with kapha hour. So around the 6 a.m. time, 
Um, again, seasonally and where we are um, in the world will depend on kind of when the sunrise is. Uh, so you can play around with what time you are getting up in the morning, but 6 a.m. is kind of a good uh, starting point to work with. Warm lemon water in the morning. So right after tongue scraping, teeth brushing, any sort of um, oral routine that we have in the morning, before we eat or drink anything, I suggest warm lemon water. And what this does is, again, starts that peristaltic activity. Uh, but it's also something warm for our ag Agni to take in first. We don't want to douse our digestive capacity, our digestive fire with cold, wet beverages. Uh, so we want something warm that's a little lighter, uh, and that lemon can be warming as well. Uh, so it's a good way to jumpstart our digestion as well as jumpstart our day. So now we'll move on to yoga or movement. Not everyone practices yoga, so just a movement practice, uh, especially important during the kapha months uh, or kapha time of year, because this is the time when we tend to want to just curl up under a blanket, hibernate, and be still. And so to make sure that we're not creating excess in kapha, we do want to balance some of that with some more movement. So things like more vigorous movement, uh, if you have a particular exercise routine, this is the time of the year that you can actually create a little more uh, activity. Uh, you can work a little harder during kapha season because we want to move through that stagnant energy. So things like circuit training, high intensity interval training is an option, vinyasa flow, yoga. So things that kind of get us right into that action and movement. Uh, yoga Nidra is also, even though it's a stillness practice, it is still an important practice that I will offer and suggest um, any time of the year, any season, because it is, a, it is an inward practice that builds and supports our ojas, our vital tank, our reserve that we need to be able to pour from. Um, so we may just change the time of day that we are practicing our yoga nidra, or we may change the technique that we are using, but it is certainly still a practice that I recommend uh, during kapha season. The other practice I recommend is called Ayurvedic Bhastrika. It is a combination of um, a pranayama practice, Bhastrika, bellows breath, and just adding some movement that is very similar to the yoga cat and cow. This can be done seated or standing, and I'll offer a little demo for you as well. Um, but Bastrika, bellows breath, is just kind of a forceful inhale and a forceful exhale in and out through the nose. Again, this kind of forceful breathing clears that kapha in the head and the chest area. And then that action of moving through cat and cow kind of warms the physical body. So it's getting us moving, getting our prana moving, uh, and just helping kind of move through any sort of lethargy, stagnation, resistance that we may be feeling. So I'm gonna stand for this. Again, this can be done seated in a chair or seated on the floor in, all, uh, in a cross-leg position. So just come up to stand and I'll face the side. If you're standing, you can just bring your hands by your side. If you're seated, you can have hands on the legs or knees. And as you inhale, we want to take the heart through the upper arms and gaze up. And as you exhale, you want to round the upper back, chin to chest. And then we add the breathing. Inhale, forceful exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale. And then we just speed up. And just end on an inhale. Pause here for an exhale. And just notice any shifts in the sensations in the body. And you can do that um, for about two minutes. And maybe not two minutes straight if you are just beginning this Ayurvedic Bastrika practice. Maybe you break it up into four 30-second increments. So just play around with it. It's a wonderful practice, again, that kind of warms the body 
uh, get you moving and create some uh, space in the sinus areas as well. If you're a little stuffy, you may want to have some Kleenex or tissue near you just to accommodate for that. All right, moving on to spiritual and inspirational uh, rituals that you can add in. So any sort of meditation on fire. Uh, so candle gazing, Trataka is a beautiful practice uh, that you can incorporate during Kapha season. And what we're doing here again is we're balancing with opposites. Ayurveda uses opposite, Our Ayurveda uses opposite therapy. And so those qualities and elements of Kapha, water, and earth that are heavy, cold, dull, cloudy, sticky, slimy, smooth, soft. We want to bring in some sharp qualities, some warm qualities, mobile qualities, uh, bright qualities, clear and subtle qualities to balance that kapha energy. So again, fire is a beautiful kind of opposite that balances a lot of these kapha qualities. Uh, you can also meditate on vastness or spaciousness. Um, so if you know any particular guided meditations that offer um, maybe a visualization of a night sky or just a clear sky or maybe clouds passing, this is a beautiful kind of visualization that you can use this time of year. Things like walking meditation. Uh, so just getting out in nature and walking and observing all the things around you, especially in the beginning of spring when things are blooming, uh, just watching regeneration happen, uh, the rebirth of nature, um, blooming, growing, trees budding, flowers, and just remembering that we do the same thing, that we are cycling as well, that we go through a period of turning inward uh, and kind of drawing inward. And then we have a period of renewal and rebirth as well. So we cycle through the seasons also. And walking meditations are a beautiful way to remember that, that we're not separate from nature. Journaling is a beautiful practice to kind of um, get any thoughts out, free writing. If we are feeling kind of stagnant in some of um, our ideas or uh, thought patterns, sometimes journaling those down, just writing about them can help create some spaciousness for new thought patterns to come through. Or um, if we're working on particular projects and feeling a little stagnant in creative energy, writing things down, just free writing again can create spaciousness for um, us to move through that feeling of uh, lack of clarity or stagnation there. Abhyanga. This is another favorite that I will recommend any time of the year. What happens though is as the seasons change, we want to begin to change our oils. So traditionally sesame oil is um, the oil used for Abhyanga, especially during Vata season. You'll hear about that in another video. But for a Kapha season, when things tend to be heavier, you can stay with sesame oil, but if you find it too heavy, you can move into something like sunflower oil or even an olive oil. And Abhyanga is full body oil massage. And the word for oil in Sanskrit is sneha, which also translates as love. So we are self-anointing ourselves with love when we practice Abhyanga. And this is done by warming the oil and then massaging from toe tips all the way to the crown of the head or from crown of the head down to the toe tips. You can even start by dry brushing if you like. Um, and it is kind of a oily process. So I recommend some old towels. Just place some old towels on the floor. Let your oil bottle sit in some warm water for about 10 or 15 minutes. And then uh, without any kind of distractions, just a quiet space, maybe light a candle, just begin to massage the body all over with oil. You can then uh, take a shower. Um, if you like, this is a wonderful time to practice your meditation practice. So we like the oil to sit on the body ideally for about 20 minutes. So if you have that time uh, to do that and uh, meditate, uh, so kind of killing two birds with one stone there, um, oiling and meditation. But if you have to get up and go, that's fine as well. Taking a shower, 
um, and rinsing the oil off is usually plenty. Um, quite often, I don't have to use a moisturizer after I abayanga because the, my skin is still really nice and smooth and moisturized feeling. So just play around with it. If you don't have time for full body abayanga, you can start by just oiling your hands and feet at night before bed. You may begin to uh, see some differences just with that small change there. And then the last practices revolve around food and drinks. So we want to favor warm, dry, light foods with tastes that lean towards bitter and pungent. So things like roasted cabbage steaks with warming spices like cumin and black pepper. Um, everybody inevitably, inevitably always asks about coffee. We love our coffee. I know I love my coffee. So in coffee season, Black coffee is what is suggested. If you do not want to give up coffee or if you're a coffee drinker, black coffee, no cream, no sugar. Coffee is one of the few beverages or one of the few foods really in the American diet that is um, a bitter taste. We don't have a lot of bitter taste in the traditional American diet. So coffee, um, you certainly can do coffee. Just black coffee during coffee season is best. And herbal teas. Uh, this is another beautiful option if you're not a coffee or caffeine drinker. Uh, herbal teas like uh, nettle tea or dandelion tea, those are astringent and pungent tastes that help move any sort of excess coffee, especially out of the sinuses. Um, and then warming teas like ginger or cinnamon or a combination of the two, uh, those help stoke our digestion and create a sense of balance in our acne as well. So what I suggest, I know that these are a lot of recommendations and options to choose from. Just pick one or two to work with for the next 40 days. And as you work with these practices, um, ideally you're doing them once every day and observing. So you may wanna keep a journal just to note uh, what you are feeling, seeing, hearing, uh, noticing, uh, look at your sleep patterns, your digestion patterns, anything that may change for you, uh, how you feel mentally and emotionally. And after the 40 days, if you notice that these practices have created something uh, that feels beneficial for you, you can hang on to these practices and maybe add one more. And again, work with that new one for 40 days. Or if you realize these practices aren't working for you, then you can change practices. You can uh, drop what you were using and pick a new one from the list. So you can listen to this video several times and kind of jot down uh, maybe the ones that speak the most to you and then come back to those over a period of time. One of the beautiful things about Ayurveda is that um, it is not set in stone what we have to do. It is uh, known that we will have to shift our practices and our rituals. What works for us at one period in our life or one season in our life may not work for us the next time. What works for me may not work for you. So um, it's a very individual experience. And the intention is that we just become more and more aware of our inner landscape and what we need uh, to create this feeling of vitality, uh, resilience, adaptability within us. So I hope you find some useful practices here today. Uh, I'm really grateful to be able to share these on the ELC. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. I look forward to connecting with you again soon. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.